Hello everyone, this is our fourth part of our series looking at applications of Jujuyuki. Jujuyuki, if you are not aware, is uh, usually translated as either X-Block or Cross-Block um, in English, uh, and is this movement, either Yay Dan or Jolo. So previously we've looked at how we can use it as a strangle, we've used it, we've talked about how we can use it as an arm lock, or how we can use it to attack nerves. This week we're going to do two final applications just to think about. One is we're actually going to use it as a block, and two, we're going to use uh, an application when we drop into our knees. So first of all, we'll talk about the block. So, Jujuyuke, obviously Yuke means to receive, not to block, but usually we translate it to mean block. The problem why most people think that it's a block, it has no relevance, is because th they think of it like this. That the punch comes in, I stand there, I do this, and then somehow my opponent doesn't smack me. But of course, he will, he really wants to. Right? So, the problem is that as a block, it can't be static. The, as a block, transitionally, it works quite effectively, but you can't be still with this technique. It is a dynamic technique. And the problem in kata is obviously you usually practice it and you are stationary. So, what I mean by this is if, for example, a punch comes and I go here, that is about seven seconds too long, right? Because you should have smacked me before before I even get the opportunity. But the one advantage about the movement, if we just freeze frame it, as the punch comes here, is the fact that Mike doesn't know which arm I'm going to use from this point. I can come this way, or I can come this way. And so it gives me options. So even though the idea of, people sometimes think, well, lifting my hands up like this isn't great, but if it's a flinch response, it might not be great, but at least I have the option that I can come this way, or I can come out. Even though I might, in a perfect world, only use one hand, the reality is, if Mike catches me and I'm moderately unaware, it might be that I just throw my hands up. Right? And then it's not too far to then think of it coming to here. Right? So, but if we're going to use it in a dynamic way, we want to make sure it's not static. So as Mike's punch comes, what I want to do is roll straight through. So as it comes, I have the block, but then I can use it to open immediately to then hit. Right? The nice thing though, as I've just said, is he doesn't know which hand I'm going to use. So I can come through on the inside, I can come through on the outside and hit, I can come through on the outside and take the arm and then come back. So I have lots of options. If my blocks, it's easy to carry on. So if we do that slowly, as the first one comes, I have my X transitional, he blocks, I have my X again. But only for a split second whilst I take control. And then I can hit, and I can even go back to where we were three weeks ago. Check it out in the comments. So if I'm going to do it as a block, which we do see in several kata, um, then it needs to be dynamic. It can't be done as a static position because my opponent is going to get me. So however I decide to do it, I must move immediately and then keep going. So as a block which gives me options, it works, but it must be dynamic. Okay? The second application I want to talk about this week is how we can use a particular application for when we drop onto the knee, which we do in some kata. I'll let you work out which cat and put it in the comments below. Uh, so I'm just going to look at this movement on the floor and one particular application for that. So I'm going to start from a grab, just because, why not, right? So first of all, if I'm grabbed like this, chances are Mike's intentions probably aren't wonderful, so he's probably going to try and smack me. So I don't really want to stay here. My objective is to try and get out of the reach of that, take him off balance, I'm going to hit him from whatever target I feel comfortable doing, right? Then my elbow comes over, I roll him across the chest, take him down, and then I'm going to break the arm. So this is my X movement, so if I take the arms right out to here, and I'm just going to turn. Now I'm not going to get that far with, Mark, uh, with Mike's arm. If I just turn this far, the technique comes on. Obviously my goal is to do that. That's my objective. So, let's just break the technique down. So as soon as the grip comes, move, don't wait, hit, turn my hips. Now if you struggle with this bit, the problem that most people have is they try and get the arms too straight. So turn your hips, think of you doing the robot, 
and then come through. Now here, if I bring my opponent in, I can create a lot of pressure on the arm, and then I come across the neck. And I come down, when I'm here, push the arm into the body and bring my knee in. I want to bring my opponent onto his side, okay? If I just spin my ground, so when I'm here, this foot pulls into the back of the neck to get my opponent properly onto the side of the body. I don't want him here because he's got too much space that he can spin around and get out. Right? So here, bring this in tight to my body. The grip can vary. Right? I prefer just clamping over with both arms. But of course, if we were being true to the application, this is the basic way. But I prefer this just because it's tighter. Then what I want to do is keep my spine nice and straight and just rotate towards the feet. I can also sit so I can get a strangle, particularly if I feed that foot right through. Then I use my heel, so that's, I'm just on the neck now rather than the arm. So I've got here. Now when you do this technique, this technique is possibly, of all the techniques that I've covered so far, the most dangerous. Because this technique is rather unique in the sense that it is not designed to break a joint. It's not designed to break the shoulder, it's not designed to break the elbow. It's designed to break the humerus, which is the bone that goes from your elbow to your shoulder, okay? your upper arm. And the best way to think of this break is it's a spiral fracture. So imagine taking a piece of celery and twisting it in both hands in opposite directions. That's what you're trying to do to the arm. So rather than attacking here, as you're there, because I've isolated the shoulder and the elbow, I'm just gonna rotate the humerus. And you can see there's barely, when it's tight, there's no movement. So never ever jerk this arm or do it quickly. You must be really, really careful. So from there, that's all you need. If my opponent's arm slips out, you can obviously carry on and go into all other kinds of techniques from there. So one more time. So from the ground move, come in, take him down, pull in, and then turn. But be careful when you get to the end. Once more, just slowly. So as soon as it comes, hit, turn, down, tuck in, spine nice and straight, make sure you work with your partner, and just turn just enough. Right? From there, Pass the elbow out so that you can get out safely, still controlling and pinning your opponent and back off. So that particular application, think of when we do Juju UK, but when we drop to the floor, it's one option. And the four weeks and four parts that we've done are in no means meant to be exclusive. There are dozens of others, but these are just some of the basic ones that I use tend to teach at the start of the student's journey, looking at different kata for the first time. So, like always guys, if you've enjoyed this series and you want to see more, please put comments uh, below suggesting things that you'd like to see in the future. I'm quite happy to do different things that people want. We've already had loads of suggestions which have been great, and we're going to get to some of those in the coming weeks. So cheers, and see you next week.